Python Dunder Method. Dunder Method. What is the Dunder Method? It sounds it's, it sounds like a real word, doesn't it? It sounds like, like oh, okay, yeah, sure, Dunder Methods. Well, if you've uh, been developing with Python, you've definitely used them firsthand and might not even have known it. Dunder Method stands for double under, D under, sort of like this double underscore. These Dunder Methods are similar to other kind of reserved word methods that you would find in other languages. Uh, languages like the constructor, right? What happens when you initialize this class, it has to call the constructor, and that's usually a method that you bake in into your class. With Python, it's double underscore init double underscore. Wait, hold on, hold on, what, what, there's two double underscores. Should this be called, and not dunder, should it be called double double under or quad under? Because there's four underscores here. I'm counting four underscores. Either way, they call it double underscore methods. And you've used one before creating that init method, which is the constructor for your Python class. Guess what? There are a whole bunch more. How many more? I mean, it looks like on the order of a uh, hundred, a <laughs> hundred, a hundred ish dunder methods. Look, I'm scrolling. I'm still scrolling. There's so many more, it keeps going. There's way too many for you to have to worry about, but there is a very interesting uh, one, the, the three, okay, so here, here we go. Trey Hunter has recommended us three Dunder methods that you want uh, to leverage in your Python in your Python class. The first one, of course, is init. This is the constructor. You kind of have to have that. I, I'm pretty sure you have to have it. Maybe you don't, <laughs> but actually probably, I, mm. just testing it real quick. You don't need to have a single Dunder method, including the constructor. It knows what to do. Just had to confirm it real quick. And this other Dunder method called Reperer. So with Reperer, it's sort of just more of a, a readable. So see how I have here here, it printed out uh, this interesting bit of text here that's kind of nonsensical. It's like, yeah, sure, it's a, an A class object at memory reference, right? So I can call repr on this and I get a whole bunch of uh, interesting. Just noticing that it, it's returning, even though I'm, I think I'm creating a new class every time, it's returning the same memory address. Ah, uh, probably because the scope is gone and it's not being kept anywhere, so there's no need to. We could just reuse the memory space. But this is not readable, so you can implement a repr. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But <laughs> default string representation, repr, representation. So now I've updated my A class with a repr, or string representation of what the what's going on. I just said an A class, that is all. All right, so see if actually works. So we do repr on A. Oh, see, instead of instead of printing out this crazy, I don't really know what's going on here, I can print out something a little more meaningful. There we go. In Python, we have dunder methods, right? These double underscore methods that allow us to define specific functions that have very specific use cases and purposes within the Python programming language and allows you to completely override some of the functionalities or at least define what the functionality would be based on operators that are being used by the developer with your class structures. The basics that you've already probably done before is the initialization constructor, right? You've got the initialization structure. The other one is EQ, equality. We want to look at the equality dunder method in Python. Let's take a look at how we would implement that. It's just no different than you would have with a constructor with the init method, with the equality method. We're going to be able to compare uh, essentially a class from itself or a class with other kinds of objects. You would always return a Boolean in equal is it gonna be represented with a double equality sign, which you're asking to compare. You're asking the compiler to compare these two variables with each other for equality. Are they the same? Are they different? So I can create a definition for equality and I'm just gonna return true always, if that does the thing. So then I can say A equals create a new, a new, uh, a new A and then I'll say B equals A. And then I can say A equals B. I forgot some syntax here. We have to say self, self. Because then you'll be able to compare the self with Y. So A, you know, X to Y, right? A and B. Now I should be able to say A is equal to B. And it'll always return true because I just had it return true. Ha ha, success. So now you've built your first Dunder method uh, using uh, symbolic expressions in Python, the EQ, the Dunder method, double underscore. Yes, I know there's more than two underscores. There's, it's, there's four underscores, so it should be the quunder.
Python lets us overload operators when we're leveraging them with class structures. We can do that using dunder methods. These are double underscore methods in Python. Guess what? The overload op you can overload operators. Just like in any uh, many other languages, it allows you to define how two objects, when they interact with each other based on symbols like a plus sign or an equal yeah, equal, checking for equality, right? Equals, equals, are they equal to each other? You can also multiply. There's a whole bunch of methods available. The easiest one is the double underscore for add. So you can add two class objects together using the double underscore add method that you define inside your class. It lets the compiler know if you run into a scenario where you have two classes and then you have a plus operator next to each other, how are you gonna deal with this? It's gonna let you define that using add. So let's implement the add operator in a class. So I'm just going to create here a, uh, a simple class. I'm going to initialize it. And I'm going to ask for a number as the parameter on my constructor. Then we're going to get the other and add it to itself and the other number. Wait, oh, because it's expecting two pub nubs. Though I suppose we can check the type if it's a number then add directly otherwise so what we can do here is create a, a nice little some syntactic sugar that allows you to add not only pubnub to pubnub but you could add pubnub to a number for example and return that and then we can write ourselves a quick little test here pubnub one pubnub two add the number and then add the number and see if it were all right so if we run our program we get a syntax error <laughs> I think we need to add our defs here, right? Our, our, our definitions. And we need to have a self here. Now we should be good to go. Nope, still not. Okay, one second. All right, now we have all our syntaxes as needed. So I should be able to run this directly and I will get the output that is expected. Okay, perfect. So this is exactly what I was looking for. So we've initialized two pub nubs, one with uh, 10 and the other 20. We can add directly 10 to our P1. We can also add P1 to P2. They're two different data types, yet we have the ability to uh, check for both and give the answer that is expected. And it is possible that instead of returning the number directly, we might also want to return the PubNu class itself. So there is a, another aspect to the story there. Depends on how you want to define the user interface for the developer that's going to be leveraging your library. When you're working with Dunder methods in Python, those double underscore methods, right? We've got our initialization method here, which is the constructor, the constructor for your class. It lets you define what happens when the developer initializes the class. You can uh, run some initial bootstrapping, save some data for, for later state. You can do a lot of different things. In it. But you also have a lot of other Dunder methods available to you, including mathematical operator overloading. Now there's a problem though. Some of these operator overloading have the sightedness to them. You can run into this issue. It's a big issue. It's actually a pretty big problem. Uh, and it's not obvious based on the compiler's output or the interpreter, right? The Python interpreter. It's going to give you an error under the scenario where you're not expecting it. Let's take a quick look here. All right, so we've initialized our pubnub class with p1 as the variable name and then we're going to see what the output of p1 plus 10 is since we have the the overload operator add which is our dunder method we're checking to see if it's an int or another pubnub type and then we're going to return the integer value we are expecting 20 because we're adding 10 plus 10. If I run this program, I get 20. I'm, I'm getting exactly what I'm looking for here. So this is this 20 here is exactly what I'm looking for. But guess what? It doesn't always work under this case. What case won't it work? Well, if I switch this around and I say 10 plus 1p or p1, it's going to give me an error. It's like, Hey, this, it's not a supported operator, but you're like, hold on a second. I added the Dunder method for this. And the problem is the sightedness. Because it's on the other side, you have to add another function called R. I think I could just return self dot. I think you can do that. <laughs> I'm free. I think it could be that simple. Let's find out. <laughs> okay. If the sightedness doesn't matter so much, in some cases it will because you're gonna have right uh, negative numbers, the sightedness will matter. So that's something to take into account. So what you'd want to do is uh, redefine the rad and put everything on the other side. So we'll just switch these around. So now we have the opposite. Other is first because it preceded it. Uh, and on the other side, uh, we have the self comes first. So now we should be able to, we get the correct numbers now 
We don't get any errors, which is great. However, what if we added a negative, no, negative 10, right? That should be zero. What if we subtracted a negative 10? Oh, we didn't add our dunder method for subtraction. It's a totally different symbol. But that's fine because you can always add a negative number. And there we go, negative 99. Let's quickly take a look at the available dunder methods. Dunder method, right? The double underscore methods in Python that allow us to assign meaning to our class when symbols are uh, compared against our class structures. These are sometimes called operator overloads in different languages. And it gives us the ability to have this really nice syntax when we're working with our objects, our class objects in Python. So that way we can have shorthand notation and it's also really easy meaning. And so one of my favorites are of course uh, mathematical operators where you can add two classes together, you could subtract them. Notice that both there's, there's sidedness, right? There's handedness here, left and right hand. So if you flip them between each other, you can easily uh, have a sidedness to them. You can multiply, divide, modulus, floor division, power of, and matrix multiplication. Note that this one doesn't have any default meaning as far as I could tell after testing it on a list myself. Even though matrix multiplication is here and you do have this at sign, you will have to implement it yourself to represent the kind of matrix multiplications that you're looking for. Your favorite tried and true dunder uh, um, method here is the initialization, which is your constructor, right? What happens when you start? String representation is the ability to print out when you print your class just as is. You want to give it extra information about what's in that class. Otherwise, you're going to get the address in a hex format of the memory location for your class, which is not useful at all. You also have the equality, right? Are these two classes equal to each other? You have a not equal and you have a hash, uh, which is a keyword that allows you to uh, return a hash representation of your of your class itself, right? Because you need to know what parts of the class are important and meaningful to hash. You also have comparator operators for sorting, right? Greater than, less than, uh, equal, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to. Oh, type conversions. Oh, nice. Okay, so you can convert it into a string, uh, convert it into a Boolean. Is it truthy? Is it not truthy? Like, is it turned on or turned off? Integer, integer representation, floats, bytes, a complex. <laughs> A complex number is an extension. Interesting. Uh, with the J suffix notation, you can represent imaginary numbers, right? Square root of negative one type situation. Built in support for complex numbers. Interesting. Okay. Well, you have a dunder method for that. String formatting. How will it print out when you uh, put your class object variable inside of a string format. Developer output representation, which is just string output. Oh, what happens when you use the with operator? Uh, that's pretty cool. How long is it? Uh, you can iterate, use it in a for loop. When you access get items using our braces here, see if something is inside your object, your class with the in operator. You can reverse it somehow. You can iterate it with the next. Also what happens if you try to access something that's missing in the class. There's so many dunder operators here. Oh, interesting. What happens when you call it directly? So you can have a class that is executable using parentheses. So you have to find X as your class, a new instance of your class. You could also recall it again, which has already been initialized, and then uh, re-execute it. Then you have your math operators, mod, division, exponent, ma matrix multiplication, binaries bitwise, so you can compare binary operators here, and or XOR, and you can shift them. Unary operators, where you can change the signedness, negation, positive, and invert with the tilde, in place arithmetic operations where you do plus equals, so it's a mutation, right? You're mutating X with Y. This is pretty cool. All the symbols are supported and quite a bit more. Like what happens if you use the round keyword in Python on your class? What would that do, right? So you can define a method called round that does that. You can also truncate it. Interesting. So if you need math operations, that's nice. And then it gets a little more complex from here and it, I don't know, it's not as interesting. Ah, and then you have some, it looks like non editable read only oh cool there's a doc string all right so if you use the doc string right where you put uh, a block of comments inside of your methods inside of your classes you can print that out 
So definitely check out Trey Hunter's Every Dunder Method here in Python. There's even a cheat sheet here at the bottom that you can use just, and it, it puts it in a nice table that shows you object creation, which is the init Dunder Method. There's a, wait, they support new? If you wanted to use new, I, is it the same? It seems different. It looks like it's different, although I've only ever used init before myself. Yeah, and then there's a whole list of everything that's really valuable here that you can use. Check out uh, Trey Hunter's Every Dunder Method in Python.